I am so excited. So excited. Do you see this? I've been wanting one of these for so long. Oh my gosh. This sublimation oven is from PYD. Look at that. It is like a toaster oven. It's just a toaster oven, but it's specifically for sublimation. So if you didn't know, sublimation, if you put something, you could also cook it just like your heat presses or your tumbler presses. But the beauty of a sublimation oven is that if you have a boo-boo, a mess up, a tumbler that just did not end up looking cute or selling or anything like that, what we can do is, is we can put the tumbler or whatever into the oven and burn off the sublimation print. So it's technically not like a forever, 100% proof thing. And I have so many tumblers that I've messed up on. I can't wait to try this. So here's the deal before we get started on any of this. If you do not have a toaster oven or a sublimation oven and you have just a regular oven, do not, let me repeat, do not put your sublimation blanks that you have, that you're trying to cook off the design with. Do not put those into your oven. Don't do it. Because what's gonna happen is, is it's going to release some toxins and chemicals and it's gonna be forever put into your oven that you would cook food in. Now, if you don't ever cook food in your oven, then yes, you can do this. But if you plan on cooking food in your oven, do not, I repeat, do not put any type of sublimation stuff inside your oven. So this is kind of key and crucial as to why I now have a, oh, can't even see, a sublimation oven. Oh, so stoked. Okay, so the top of the oven had this like silicone glove thing. This thing is like super thick. You can't feel anything through this. The sublimation glove heat resistant glove that I had was this small thin, look at this. Look at how thin this is. It's so thin. I, it, you know what? I honestly didn't even think that it, that it uh, did anything. <laughs> so this thing is super thick. I love it love it the other thing that it comes with inside the oven some really nice heat resistant tape and these look like sleeves like what we would you would put you put your tumbler in here and then zap it with a little bit of heat and it's like shrink shrink wrap uh film so that's what this is this thing is actually a little bit smaller than what i thought it was going to be i definitely thought it was going to be larger but like, it seems to fit, hmm, let me see. So we have this tray right here that's like a grated tray, but then also we have one that's like a solid grate. I also have a couple tumblers from PYD as well. These ones are pretty cool because they're tapered. I also have ones that have handles on it. If you have done a tumbler that has a taper like this in sublimation, you're gonna to need to help me out because I don't know what I'm doing with this. Okay, so this is the tumbler. Let's take the lid off because we're gonna, ooh, I like that it twists on and off. Okay, let's put, okay, so this won't stand up in the um, oven, but if we put this like this, It'll lay in there. So, okay. I wonder if that affects anything. It's not very big, but you know, if it's like one tumbler at a time. And look at how cute. My tumbler press that I got from Craft Express, it matches it almost perfectly. Look at how cute they are together sitting there. Oh my goodness. Okay, so it is heating up. It's just a dial. Oh, here we go. Okay, so to do the time and temp, you would press that temp. To do the temp, the time, you would increase this. Then when you have it all set, you can hold this as well to do Celsius if you needed to. And then when you're ready, you would just press the play button and then it would start heating up. So you're gonna have to pull this back from the wall because at the very back right here, there's hot air blowing out. So you, I think we don't wanna put this near the wall. Good thing that I have this on a rolling cart because then you can pull it away from the wall. Hot air is blowing out from the back of this. 
Looks like it's fully heated up. It did not take very long, and we can open this up. Ooh, it is very hot on the inside. Now, because I just turned this on, it does kind of smell like you're burning plastic or something like that, but not too bad. And I think for sure when I use this, we're gonna pull it away from the wall because that back fan blower is pretty warm. Okay, and then when you're done, we can just press and hold on the play button, and then it'll shut itself right off. Okay, so I need to find one of those sublimation tumblers that I messed up on, put it in this bad boy, and see what happens. Okay, changed my mind. What we're going to do is, is we're going to do a coffee mug and then also a tumbler. Uh, we're going to see what you have to do to prep it and how long it takes, you know, do it all. So I am just prepping the mug and the tumbler like I would any other sublimation project. And I'm just going to toss it in the oven, hoping it works. For the sublimation tumbler, I am going to use one of those shrink wrap films because I believe that's really imperative to make sure we don't have any ghosting on our tumbler. Okay, so with the machine already heated up, I am just going to use my mitt and I'm going to put that one mug inside of the oven, close the door and press play. So generally when it comes to mugs, it really only takes three minutes in the mug press. So I'm gonna see what three minutes looks like for the sublimation oven. When the timer is done, the oven's gonna to start to beep. And so making sure that you have your silicone mitt on, we are going to check to see if the image transferred or not. So three minutes was definitely not enough time to put your image onto the mug. So I'm going to retape it, put it back in the oven, and I'm going to set the time to 16 minutes because I just read the directions and apparently it's 16 minutes to sublimate onto a mug. So after 14 minutes, I finally pulled it out of the oven and it seems like it did all right. I would have to say though, in a mug press, it would be three minutes in the oven. It's 14. So that's quite a big difference. I do have to say though, the print turned out really cute. So I don't know. Okay, for the tumbler, I'm actually gonna follow some directions instead of winging it, which is what I like to do. So the directions say to use the temp at 355 degrees with a uh, timer of six minutes. So that's what I'm gonna set and hopefully it works out. Now that the tumbler is finished and kind of cooled off, I'm going to take off that shrink wrap and reveal what it ends up looking like. So I do have to say the images turned out really good, but there's a couple spots where I messed up on. Um, and then obviously like the spacing is off and stuff like that. Okay, so let's throw this in the oven and do exactly what I wanted to do and burn off the images. Okay, so I'm going to put the tumbler back inside the oven just at the same temp that we use to put the images on the tumbler. From what I've read is that as it sits in this hot oven, it'll eventually cook off or evaporate the images right off. Okay, so I have now had the tumbler in the machine for 18 minutes and it's still not burned off and it's starting to get hot up in this craft castle. Okay, so the tumbler has now been in the oven for about an hour and it's still not burned off. And frankly, it's really hot in my craft room. Um, the temperature is set at 355 degrees in the oven and the air that's blowing out the back of the oven is also 355 degrees. So it's been running for an hour, meaning it's jumping the temperature of my craft room a lot. Okay, so I'm not someone that enjoys being overly hot. I seem to get a little bit diva when things get a little bit too warm. So I am going to work on this the next couple days and hopefully get it burnt off a little bit. But it's been in the oven for now over an hour and it's still not very light at all. So I don't know. Okay, so I have burnt off as much as what I think is going to get burnt off. This thing was in the oven for about an hour and a half two hours and so it has it's very light it's a lot lighter than what it was um and so i just found a northern lights sublimation backdrop thing off of creative fabrica and i'm just going to put this on this and we'll see what it ends up looking like i did a darker version of the print just because this is really dark and i want to hide as much as possible we'll see how it works i've never tried one before okay so the same thing that we're going to do for every sublimation tumbler is you just want to trim off all the edges okay and then for this one i 
want to roll this over and see how there's, I made the print like extremely large. So we just want to, I'm gonna just take my scissors and kind of make it just a little bit larger. We don't want it to be too short because otherwise that you'll have a gap. So you wanna keep it to where it's just a little bit larger than the end of the print. Now with that cut that I've created, I am just going to line that back up. Okay, cutting that off. So then you are done with your guillotine cutter. You could do scissors if you wanted to as well. Um, it's just a lot easier if you have a guillotine cutter. I'm just gonna wipe this off with my shirt. Okay, then what you wanna do is taking the back sides, we're gonna roll this over. We are going to just add a long strip of tape to the back of just one side. And you wanna make sure that it goes all the way over to the very edge of your piece of paper, but it's not hanging over on this side right here. And then by taking your cup, we're gonna roll this back over, lining this up. Now, when you fold this over, this side is going to be the first side that goes onto your cup. Then you're gonna roll this over and it's gonna go over the top of this piece of tape. The reason why we're doing that is to make sure that we don't have uh, like a seam. Okay, when you have it all lined up together, we just wanna take it and make sure it's nice and straight onto our cup. Taking just one piece of tape, I'm gonna just tape this side and I'm gonna pull it tight, just like that. Okay, then taking another piece of tape and I'm just going to go up to the top and right here, go up to the top. Okay, I'm just gonna leave these pieces of tape just hanging out and then what you wanna do is just take another piece of tape and we're gonna go along the edge, just like that. If I were using my sublimation tumbler press for this, I would just go ahead and skip this part, but I'm gonna be using the oven just to test the oven out. So I'm gonna use one of these like shrink wrap sleeves. I'm gonna slip the bottom in just like this, put it right in the middle. Using a heat gun, we're gonna make sure to move this out of the way so you don't shrink wrap all the rest of the stuff. Using a heat gun, just turn it on and we're gonna blow this to where it shrinks all up with each other. Okay, now that it is all shrink wrapped, all the edges are shrinked out, everything's shrink wrapped, we're gonna go and put this in the sublimation oven. Okay, so the greatest thing about this is that it comes with directions too. So I am using a skinny tumbler, and so we have shrink film is what it suggests, and the temperature is 355 for six minutes. So when I plug this in, it's already set to 355. Then what I wanna do is press that timer and I wanna go down to six minutes. And when you press play, what it's going to do is it's going to heat up. You could go ahead and wait for this to heat up and then put it in. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up. I'm just gonna throw my tumbler in there, shut it. It's going to heat up to the temp that it needs to be. And then once it's there, it will start doing the countdown of the time that you set it. So six minutes, it's going to count down. And then at six minutes, it's going to beep, letting you know that it's done. Okie dokie, now that it's done, I have a thin glove on one hand and then a thicker one on the other because this thing is going to be hot. Now, I would suggest waiting until this cools, but I have zero patience. So if you're like me, just make sure and have your gloves on there so you don't roast your fingers. And let's see what this ends up looking like. <laughs> okay, I've shredded that. So the reason why I kept the pieces of tape long is so now all you have to do is pull back and all the tape just comes off in one final swoop. Okay, are we ready? Let's see what this looks like. Oh, okay. So it looks like I had a little bit of a gap up here. So I messed up on the spacing of this. But then if you look closely, you can see that there is still a little bit like this one. You could totally see that we had Mickey ears on there. I mean, it's really cute. Maybe if you had like a lighter print that was less black that you were trying to burn off, this would work. Or if you chose a design that was like really dark all throughout, like right here, you can't see anything. And then up at the top, you can see how there's like green right here, but then when it gets into the darker colors, it fades away. So if you had like a design that was mostly black, this would actually work. And then obviously we would have to make sure and get it all aligned appropriately. But look at that. Okay, 
I can see where this craft would go. All right. Well, so my final thoughts on the sublimation oven is this. The idea of burning off and then getting yourself a new tumbler and so you're not going to waste um, ones that you messed up on, that idea I think I like. The only problem is, is that oven blows hot air out of the back of it and I am in the south. So in the summertime, when I am running my air conditioner all day long because it gets hot up in my craft room, uh, the last thing I'm going to want to do is run an oven that blows hot air out the back of it. So I don't know for sure if this oven is for me, but I do like the fact that now I just have something that I can try and reuse my mess ups. All right, y'all, I sure hope that I was able to give you a little bit of direction on what oven to buy and why you would want a sublimation oven. I'm not entirely sure, but at least we now have a option on kind of what to do with our messed up tumblers so we're not constantly throwing things in the garbage. All right, friends, I will see you later.